Welcome to MacroCode. Today we are going to learn about Entity Framework CoFluent API. So Entity Framework CoFluent API is used to build model based on entity classes. So we can actually override the default convention of Entity Framework Co using uh, Fluent API when targeting the database schema. So <clears throat> So when targeting the database schema, uh, Fluent API has higher precedence than conventions and the data, data annotations. So in Entity Framework Core, Fluent API offers the following uh, features. One is uh, uh, model configuration. Uh, this configures an EF model to database mapping. Then we have uh, entity configurations. These are con it configures the primary key, alt alternate key index, table name, one to one, one to many, and many to many relationships. It also has a uh, property configurations. So for the property configuration, it configures the property to column mapping, e.g., like naming column name, default values, nullability, foreign key, and data types. So today we are going to learn how we are going to use this uh, Entity Framework of Fluent API. So as we have just said, uh, Fluent API has higher precedence than the convention and the data annotations on the convention on the actually default convention of Entity Framework Core. So uh, if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. So we had created, we had done a video about uh, uh, EF Core migrations. So we'll be continuing our video of uh, uh, Fluent API using this uh, uh, continuation of the video. So if you are new to this channel, you can consider watching our previous uh, videos so that you get to understand. So we have uh, created our, our application uh, uh, using uh, ASP.NET Core MVC. Then we have uh, app settings which we have connected to our SQL database. Then we have a model called student and we have actually created our application DB context with the students as one of our, our tables. So, so to use a uh, Fluent API, uh, suppose because we had created this, so we have created this, so we'll, we'll actually remove these annotations. So we have our ID, first name, middle name, and the last name. We can actually add also something called uh, date of birth. So this can be date time. Uh, then we call this date of, date of birth. So, so that is our another value. I can remove this. So we write Entity Framework Core Fluent API configuration inside the own model creating method of the database context. So we created our application DB context, but we don't have that method here. So we will need to add it. So on our application DB context, we can add a uh, that method protected override void then on model on model creating then we'll have our model builder then we open this so th that is it so so this is where we write so this is where we usually write uh, we write uh, fluent API API. So this is where we write fluent API configurations. And as we have just said, fluent API configuration offers two, three uh, features. The model configuration, which you can configure EF model to database mappings. Entity, entity uh, configurations, which you can configure primary key, alternate key index, table names, one-to-one -one or one-to-many. Uh, relationships and even many to many then we have the property configurations which configures the property to column uh, mapping so inside these uh, on model creating uh, method so this is where we define our entity uh, that is our fluent api configurations 
So one, we can do what we call entity configurations. So we said it has three. So this is our first one. So our entity configuration, we can do model builder dot entity. Then we say we pass our model student. Then we so this is a method. Then we say has key as key, then we specify the key. Our key will be the ID. So this, this, what does this do? So remember on our model, we had an annotation called, uh, we had an annotation called key. So this one, it actually sets the ID as the primary key. So you can do this on our model or you can do it on our application DB context under, under this section. So Husky sets this uh, field as the primary key using the Husky function. So this is how you do that. Then we have another one. So we, assuming we want now, so we have done the entity configuration. So this is how you do the entity configurations. So we have something called property configurations. So uh, for property configurations, let's do let's do something called uh, so we define our we do this then we say entity we can just specify entity then we say we open this then we say entity the property e dot name so we can say first name of our student name sorry we need something here called e something like that so this should be first name that's fine then we say dot has column as column name you can see as column name you, you can specify the the column name so uh, we say student first name so it will actually uh, rename this huh? so so one thing that i need you to see on our database we, ha we have actually a database of our students so you can see we have a student id first name middle name and last name so we will see the effect of having these under the property configurations property so has has column name then you can say we can give it default you can actually give it a default value as dot as default value so our default value we can say macro code macro code then we can also indicate if it is required is required so that is it then we can close this Another thing that we can also do on entity on the property is we can say entity can say entity dot property then we say uh, date of birth you can say date of birth then you can say dot as column type. So this one should be dot as column, column type. You can indicate the column type of that. Then you can say it's date. You can specify the date, the column type. Then we can also say dot has default value. Sorry, say that has default value. So we can now as default value SQL, then we can pass our SQL command here. So to get the default value, 
we do this get date then we do that then we close so that is it then we can actually close here yes then we can we can also add another so that is how you define the configuration using NT framework code so I can add my creations, assume you want to add my creations. So, so refer to our vi previous videos if you don't know how to do migrations. We have a video on uh, EF core migrations. So I'll add migration. And I say uh, migration name will be uh, added date of birth. Date of birth press enter then uh, that is good so it has created our under the migrations folder it has created our class for migrations it has added the so you can see what what the the fluent migration has done so on our student class we have this first name and middle name and the last name so we have added a, a, another column called date of birth uh, uh, then under the on creating on model creating for under fluent API migrations, the fluent API will rename our column first name to student first name and actually give it a default value macro code. Then the data date of birth it will also change the data type to date and give it a default date from SQL. So if you come to our 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 class you will see that it has a, a command called rename column first name table a student's new name will be student first name so it will alter student's first name on the table type is that one then it will give it a default value to macro code and then it will add another column called date of birth under the students and give it the data type as date it doesn't allow nullable and give it a default value which is uh, get date. So if we up update our database using the update database command, then press enter. So it will complete that. So if we check our database under the students table, then uh, select. So you can see we have a uh, we have a uh, first name table. The first name column has been renamed to student first name then we have a date of birth so if we just click on the columns you can see that now the date of birth uh, data type is date a uh, student first name doesn't allow null so if we create any new record to this uh, table the default name for student name is will be macro code so let's get back to our our application db context so so the property on the date that you have just created here it will be configured to be a date type here with the default SQL value given by this function so in case you want to ignore in case maybe we can add another call another column on our on our model assuming we want to add a phone number we say string then phone number phone number so when we add migrations when we add migrations when we sorry so when we add migrations this column will be created to the database so assuming we want to avoid this we want this column but we don't want it to appear on our database so what we do we do is we come to we come here then we say model model builder dot entity then we specify the student then we say dot ignore so we want it to ignore ignore then we specify the column the column is phone number so that is how you do it so if we add migration right now then we say add 
phone number. We don't expect anything on our add phone number class. There you are. You see, we, we don't have anything and we have added a column. So if we just remove this uh, class, can delete it. Then on our DB context, we comment this line. Then we, re we redo the add migration. So we'll, we'll have our migration adding that column. You see, we have the phone number and the add column command creating our, our new column on the students table. So that is how you do. You use Fluent API on, on uh, EFCO. So, so Fluent API has methods. So those methods, um, uh, we have a lot of methods on Fluent API that you can be able to use it on on the application DB context. So we have uh, currently we have used used some uh, like has key. So these are, are one of the method. We have as index as no key as one as many configuring the the methods. So that is how you actually do that. So. Uh, on our next video, we'll be uh, showcasing how you can configure one-to-many relationship, one-to-one -one relationship, and many-to-many -many relationship using the Fluent API. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and uh, watching our other videos. See you on our next session.